a Jewish Marxist sympathizer by the original name of Lev Devanovich Bromstein, was living in New York City as of 1917, having been publicly expelled from Germany a few years before. He would be given $10,000 from the Rockefellers and a passport arranged by President Wilson. Lev would be set aboard on the U.S. Christian Ford to set sail for Petrograd, Russia, that he might incite a revolution. Lieutenant Colonel John Bain McLean, known for his ties to Canadian intelligence, would publish in his magazine the following. Originally, the British found through Russian associates that Kerensky, Lenin, and some lesser leaders were practically in German pay as early as 1915, and they uncovered in 1916 the connections with Trotsky, living in New York. From that time, he was closely watched by the bomb squad. In the early part of 1916, a German official sailed into New York. British intelligence officials accompanied him. He, Trotsky, was held up at Halifax, but on their British intelligence instruction, he was passed on with profuse apologies for the unnecessary delay. After much maneuvering, he arrived in a dirty little newspaper office in the slums, and there he found Trotsky, from whom he bore important instructions. From June 1916 until they passed him on to the British, the New York bomb squad never lost touch with Trotsky. They discovered that his real name was Bronstein, and that he was German, not a Russian. Having arrived in Russia with the help of the U.S. and British, Trotsky would later receive the company of Vladimir Lenin. Lenin, who was in Switzerland, was put aboard a sealed train in order to pass safely through Germany along with his entourage of revolutionaries. Two German officers would ensure the silent transport made it to Russia safely. These revolutionaries would, of course, need funding for their operation, provided by none other than Western banking interest. In 1915, the American International Corporation was formed to fund the Russian Revolution. Its directors represented the interest of the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, DuPont, Kuhn, Loeb, Harriman, and the Federal Reserve. They included Frank Vanderlip and George Herbert Walker. Sir Rothschild's man Jacob Schiff would personally deposit $20 million to revolutionaries, and as recorded in the Congressional Record of September 2, 1919, Elihu Root, lawyer for Kuhn and Loeb, and former Secretary of State, would deposit another $20 million. Between European and American banking interest, they would create the great communist menace of the 20th century, for which millions would die in domestic purgings and foreign wars in the years to come. 